Well, hello there, and you're very welcome to another Senior Times podcast with me, Mairead Robinson. Now, today we're discussing a food supplement that studies have shown can help slow the progress of the dreaded dementia condition. I'm going to be talking to professors John Nolan and Rihanna Mulcahy about their work in developing this supplement. So I'm going to start now by speaking with Karen Fennell from Macu Health about this supplement, and it's called Remind. Karen, I love that this hugely important medical study hails from Waterford. Please tell us about this exciting new product. Thanks, Mairead. We're very excited to be able to bring this unique supplement to the Irish market. So it has been developed on the back of um, over about 20, 25 years of uh, clinical research, both into the eye, nutrition for the eye and also nutrition for the brain. So Remind is unique insofar as it contains a a unique combination of carotenoids, omega-3s and vitamin E. And these are all nutrients that naturally gather in the brain. Remind is an over-the-counter food supplement. So it's it can be taken by anyone and it's it's three capsules a day. It has no side effects and has it is safe to use with other medication. And most importantly, it's supplement certified. So Remind is the first one of the first companies to sign up for certification of their supplement, which means it has been put through additional testing for meeting its label claims and also for perfect shelf life stability. So we're very excited to be able to bring this supplement to the market because we feel it's going, it's, research is fantastic, but it's only great if, um, if general society can benefit from it. So t- to have a product like this developed in, in uh, research in Waterford and to be able to launch it into the Irish market is, uh, is fantastic. It certainly is. It's actually very exciting news. Alzheimer's is such a cruel disease and it steals people from their families, doesn't it? It what does. Is- and the effects is not only on the patients, but also on the people caring for them as well. So the it's the wider of family. Of course. And that's where the the story gets really um, important. Excellent. Well, um, I'd like to know a little bit about the science. I'm delighted that Professor John Nolan, who's a Fulbright scholar, and he's the founder and director of Nutrition Research Centre. That's again in Waterford. Um, delighted to speak with you, John. Thank you so much for taking the time out to join us. So, Please explain to us in layman's terms, if that's possible, a little yeah. bit of the science behind this amazing product. Absolutely, uh, Marie. Thank you for the invitation. So, yes, I, I work, as you say, at the Nutrition Research Centre in, in, in Waterford. As we're part of the Southeast Technological University. So every day, uh, you know, a, a large number of scientists wake up and we try to work w- with um, nutrition and targeted nutrition that we can use and we've had a lot of success over the years for diseases like age-related macular degeneration, for example, when, when we see with the Macu Prime um, product how we can help rebuild protective pigments in the back of the eye. And ultimately, our science is, is, is about identifying the best way to measure the outputs that you're interested in. So in the case of vision, you're looking at, you know, can you pr- prevent a blindness or can you enhance visual performance? When our work moved into the brain health and brain function and ultimately Alzheimer's disease, we had a couple of very um, important discoveries. And one was that um, these nutrients, firstly, they they live in the the brain and the eye. So they're highly, these nutrients called carotenoids. They're plant-based pigments. So when you eat fruits and vegetables or when you look at the color of egg yolk, for example, the goodness that's in foods are because of these nutrients called carotenoids. So essentially what we were able to do was isolate the specific carotenoids that are concentrated and working for us in the retina, that's the back of the eye, but also in the brain. And in one of our very first studies, we identified that patients with Alzheimer's disease are very deficient in these nutrients. Now, that's possibly because they don't eat a lot of food, but it was a very strong observation that when we compared patients with Alzheimer's disease to controlled participants, we saw that there was a big difference in the in the concentration of these particular nutrients that we hypothesized that we believe to be very important to protect the brain. So then around the same time, we actually did a massive study in Ireland as part of the Irish Longitudinal Study on Aging, the TILDA study, which some of your listeners may be familiar with. Indeed. And as part of this work, uh, working with um, Professor Roseanne Kenny and, and Joanne Feeney, other scientists from Trinity, we identified that actually if you take 
a massive sample from society, like 5,000 people. And if you measure their carotenoid, these carotenoid scores, when you measure those, you see very clearly that individuals that have high amounts of these carotenoids have much better cognitive functions. So brain function, so memory, attention, reaction time and all of these things. Now, the reason why these nutrients we believe to be very important for brain health and for protecting the brain is that they have what we call antioxidant properties. So no different to wearing sunscreen outside on your skin, we can put those antioxidants inside our body and actually get them to the brain. So essentially, the most recent study, the Remind study, which has now been published and which Karen and the Remind team in Waterford have been able to commercialize, we used a very select bunch of nutrition, which was the combination of the carotenoids, the omega-3 fatty acids, and also vitamin E. So it was this combination of the absolute right amounts of these nutrients. And building upon years of interventional works that we've done in Alzheimer's disease, we ran what's called a double blind placebo control trial. And this is simply a trial where some of the participants, some of the patients are getting the active ingredients and some of them are getting a placebo. So they're getting no active ingredients. So only that way can you really understand if your proposed intervention is beneficial for a disease like Alzheimer's disease. Now, let me be clear. We're not claiming here for a second that we're going to stop Alzheimer's disease or that this cures Alzheimer's disease. It doesn't. I don't think we will ever cure a a horrible disease like Alzheimer's disease. But what we are able to do is nourish the vulnerable tissues and, you know, the parts of the brain that are dependent upon working and that are responsible for giving us our memory, giving us our attention, giving us a reaction. So if we can nourish those by by getting high amounts and safe amounts of these nutrients to patients that absolutely need them, can, can we really enhance their quality of life? And ultimately, that's what the Remind trial has demonstrated, that when you, when you give these patients who are at that early to middle stage Alzheimer's, so they're not very progressed, they're kind of, the whole concept here about nutrition is early intervention. So when you do it early enough, you can really have a positive effect on the symptoms of the disease, if you like. This was published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. Um, The professor and the editor of the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease is very pleased with this work because, as Prof Mulcahy and others will will verify, for too long now, we've been looking and and working to to try and use treatments which are unfortunately ineffective and in some cases, um, you know, even damaging to the patient. So to do something that's, that's, you know, you know, accessible, something that's safe, something that now we have an evidence base that it in some way helps the patients and gives their carers, the the family members, some hope that there's something that can be done when these patients have this condition. But one of the messages from our facility would be that, you know, the earlier you get in, our, our, our other works show in healthy populations, for example, there can be a real um, benefit to having um enriching these particular nutrients. And remember, these nutrients are entirely of dietary origin. So they're not synthetic. They're what normally comes from good foods. So to be able to formulate them and concentrate them has been really, really successful indeed. That's fascinating. And I see from um, some of the information, background information, that foods like broccoli, trout and peppers contain ingredients. So Here's a silly question. Why not just eat broccoli, trout and peppers every day? Are you not? Well, we should. Them? We should eat broccoli, trout and peppers. Um, but the, the problem is even the healthiest person that I know is probably 20 times away from having enough of these particular nutrients. So right. we should do all of that. Yes. And that's the pillar of health is good nutrition. And that's what Prof Mulcahy and others in within healthcare will always promote. And that's what I, as a nutritional biochemist, that's what I will promote. There's a couple of parts to this. We're not getting enough. And the other point is we're living longer than we're supposed to. So we need to find ways to use appropriate supplements and safe supplements and supplements that are tested for certain population groups, such as those I believe at risk of of, of dementia, of Alzheimer's that can benefit. Sponsored by Expressway. With My Expressway, free travel pass holders can reserve their seats online at expressway.ie or at our ticket machines in stations. Think you're not smart enough to own a smartphone? Well, think again and think Doro. Doro phones are designed specially with the older person in mind. They're easy to use with louder sound and larger text. Plus numerous state-of-the-art features that don't compromise on performance or quality. To learn more about the full range of high-tech Doro phones, visit doro.ie. 
Doro Phones. Make friends with innovation. I know of a family who, who, who were very, very sadly affected by early onset Alzheimer's. I know that the, uh, the, the father, um, he passed away in his, I think, late 40s. And then wow. there were five children and th- they did some tests and some of those kids were carrying the gene and two of them actually, unfortunately, passed away in their 30s. Um, could anything have been done for them to slow down that horrible uh-huh. disease? I, I, I don't know. I doubt it. And I think, you know, I would I would I would le- lend to my medical colleagues and medical profession to maybe, you know, we do know that, you know, all diseases is governed by genetics. Um, we're yes. predisposed to these diseases. The opportunity with nutrition, lifestyle and modifying and optimizing that for me is that you have an opportunity to to enrich your environment, to enrich what you do. And if you do that, you can essentially, although you may be genetically predisposed to various diseases, you can push out the age at which you're going to get them based on the right choices around life, nutrition, lifestyle, and so on. So we've modifiable factors. That's the point. All diseases are genetically predisposed, but you can modify your environmental lifestyle factors. And we know actually with the men with Alzheimer's, I think the data suggests that you know we, the science suggests that about one third of cases can are preventable throughout our life if you make the right decisions with life and lifestyle. And just look at how we live nowadays. Just yes. look look at how we live. Look at the foods we've access to. It's very difficult, right? Um, the people on this call will be people that know about this, you know, Yeah. but yes, it's, it's not that easy to get enough of these foods. Now I'm not saying for a second that we should all stop eating these good foods and all default to a supplement. I don't think we should do that. I think it's one part of a modifiable part. So, um, there is a, a hereditary connection to the disease. So what about people now who are in their fifties and sixties, and they know that their parents were badly affected by Alzheimer's by the time they got to be 80 or so. So I think what I'm trying to ask you is if you could guesstimate, what's a good time to start taking this supplement? Well, I'll answer it. And then maybe I know Rena's on her phone. Maybe she can join. Um, but I'll answer it and then maybe let Rena come in. You know, nature suggests from the cradle. And what I mean by that is when you look at colostrum, when you look at breast milk, the, the, the color that you see in, in the first milk that a baby receives is, is full of these carotenoids. So the earlier you do it, the better. Okay. It's in, these carotenoids are involved in retinal development, brain development, and, and ultimately, you know, these tissues that give us our sight and, and, fun- and work to give us our brain functions, they're vulnerable to this process known as oxidative stress, which is basically the cost of doing business with life, the cost of using oxygen to live. We metabolize that oxygen. So our our tissues are always under attack and we have this kind of balance and act within, within health where we can protect against that for long enough. The problem I believe is eventually we fall off the cliff on our ability to protect. Um, And this typically, this is why all of these diseases are age related. I'm not sure Prof Mulcahy, if you can hear us, I know you've tried to join on your phone. Can you hear us there? I can hear you fine now. Oh, yeah. excellent. Well, thank yeah. you. You're very good to join us. I do believe that you have you, you would have some um, experience of Remind with your patients. Is that right? So absolutely. I think the, you know, we have used Remind in people with mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease. And what we found, so Alzheimer's disease, I suppose, just to define it, first of all, it's a progressive condition. Um, we define it by what's called the four A's. So you've amnesia, which is uh, ongoing short-term memory loss and then agnosia where you actually forget how to do simple things so like tying shoelaces making a cup of tea yes. and people would, in that would say do you know I'm not sure if I get to remember tomorrow if or if I'm going to lose it or I'm not sure tomorrow if I'm going to remember how to dress my clothes or even more emotive is I'm not sure tomorrow whether I'll remember you or not. So, you know, from the point of view of the personal impact of, of Alzheimer's on people, it's huge. It's, it, it's not yes. a disease. It's a personal impact disease. So that's where um, we are experienced with Remind Days and that we found that carers reported that their loved ones were much more engaged, that they were able to carry on conversations on the telephone, that they were able to engage better in every day and had memories of everyday events. So I'm not saying it made Alzheimer's go away, but I'm saying that the personal impact on them during during the trial, we found that the carers were able to report really positive outcomes on how their loved ones were functioning and managing in their everyday. 
So Alzheimer's, I suppose, just to say as well, it's not just your impact on memory. It affects your ability to do everyday activities and your behavior and mood. And behavior and mood also had positive impacts during the trial where we were told, look, they're in better form. They're managing so their everyday important. better. It is because, you know, we, our, our treatments for Alzheimer's have been very much focused on drugs. So to date, we really have two families of drugs that have been licensed for Alzheimer's disease. And at best, they slow progression over a number of months and then it becomes somewhat relentless again. So... All drugs have benefits, but every drug also has side effects. So maybe something to emphasize on this is that this is a nutritional intervention yes. with no known side effects. So we're really trying to work with nature, but in very much an enhanced way of giving a natural, you know, natural products. The, um, mm. And I, I did hear the end of John's conversation there. I think it's critical that diet and exercise are part of our everyday advice. And I do advise everybody in the clinic. But then if you said to me, well, how much broccoli? And if that was your question, how much broccoli and peppers <laughs> do you have to eat? Well, almost a half a trailer load to get the benefit <laughs> of the intervention. So okay. um, best of luck with that. But it could be difficult <laughs> to get in. <laughs> now, I think it's I, what I think is very important. And you just you just hit on it there, you know, that it, it is actually it's a food supplement, not a medication. So I assume by that you don't need a prescription for it. No. Well, we can put it on a prescription so that the pharmacy knows what the, what the person is looking for. But no, this is a nutritional supplement and that's really important. So, mm. you know, unlike drugs where, you know, in every drug that I prescribe, I talk about the benefits and I talk about the side effects and it's a balancing act. And for many drugs that we use, or drugs that we use for Alzheimer's disease, they have no impact at all. They work on maybe a third of people. So it's very much my job when I meet the patient. Again, if they're not doing anything to stop them. Whereas with these nutritional intervention, at the very least, you will feel better. Yes. And in a group of patients, they had a very positive um, impact on how they were managing. So, you know, you're giving a nutritional enhancement. And unfortunately, with Alzheimer's disease, and we see this very often, that nutritional intake can become very much convenience food. So it can be a oh, cup yes. of tea and a scone or a cup of tea and a sandwich because yeah. that's easy. Yes. So putting on the dinner and two vegetables and whatever, that's, that takes a lot. It takes a lot of effort to go and do the shopping, to put on the dinner, to consume the dinner. And so we very much are what, you know, patients tend to resort to, you know, tea and a biscuit, tea and a scone, and maybe a boiled egg and whatever. So it becomes much more difficult for me to say, well, no, I want you to eat oily fish. I want you to eat vegetables. Mm. I want you to eat. And then they say, well, how much? And then do you want me to do that every day? And it becomes, it becomes a difficult intervention. And it would be brilliant. You know, it would be brilliant if we could enhance our natural diet in ways to achieve the nutritional supplement levels that we're looking for. But just right now, um, we're not able to do that. Yes, I, I understand that. And one of the aspects of Alzheimer's, which is very, very, very difficult for the carers, and I know this because I saw it in my own family, is that the person suffering from Alzheimer's can become quite aggressive. And that's very unnerving and frightening for the other family members. Mm. So that's so true. You know, behavioural and psychological symptoms are very much part of the overall diagnosis of Alzheimer's. And you know what you'll often hear is that, oh, he was the gentlest man that you could yeah. ever come across. But all of a sudden he's cranky at night time and he's getting very short tempered with us. And of course, that's not his fault. But yes. it becomes very difficult for people around them to understand that or, you know, a level of paranoia can kick in where it's, you know, I don't know you and where did you come from? And yet you've been living together for 30 years. And that's that's very difficult. It's very difficult. Very and, difficult. you know, really um, with Remind, I think it's really important just to say, look, we're not saying and I'm certainly not saying that this will make Alzheimer's go away. But if you can gain a bit of extra time. Um, where you are managing better and in better form, then that's great. So it's important to be honest about the science, but also to report the science as we found it, that this is, a, you know, the, the, the trial did report positive um, impacts on quality of life and how people functioned in their day to day. And I, I think, think it's important think to... Sorry, yeah, it's John. important to highlight, sorry, it's important to highlight as well that this is not just one trial or one group, you know, uh, Prof Mulcahy and I are part of an international group of scientific experts, you know, all working in our own laboratories. We're very lucky, by the way, in Waterford here. 
to have someone like Prof Mulcahy, you know, be so good at research and to to engage with research, you know, as a busy medical doctor to spend that time uh, with us, you know, because we have to work with all ethical standards and yes. care care for the patient has to be primary. But but that doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. And and thankfully with Prof Mulcahy and her wonderful team at the University Hospital in Waterford, we were able to safely and carefully do that in partnership with our with the families and the patients. Um, but I wanted to make that point that it is an international project uh, where we've been able to look at human nutrition. And, you know, we've just back from Cambridge where we had our our, our big conference. We call it the Bond Conference, um, the Brain and Ocular Nutrition Conference. And you can see that, you know, what started as maybe a small idea, maybe 12, 13 years ago, where we were moving away from our work in eye health into the brain. Now you can see all the achievements of all the scientists and, and kind of like a global validation that we're on the right journey here. You know, we don't have all the answers, as Prof said, yes. but like we're definitely after answering a lot. And for me as a nutritional biochemist, what you know, sometimes when what I say to my students is sometimes the answer is right in front of you. And if yeah. you look at the brain and you look at what it's made up of, nutrition is a major part of that. The, of you know, the, the fats, um, you look at the neurons, we have 100,000 billion neurons. These are basically like the electrical connections, if you think of them, that are all kind of joining and receiving the various signals and doing their job. And, you know, just like the rest of us, the they get old, they get aged. And yes. is there the whole idea with nutrition here is that if you can localize it, if you can enrich it in a safe way, maybe there's something positive you can do. And as, as Prof said, the evidence suggests that there's benefits to doing this as opposed to not doing this. And then the final challenge for us now is obviously we need to do more research. You know, we do not have had the we do not have the access to the type of funds that, you know, drug companies would get to run these massive, massive trials. And everyone wants the big, 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 big numbers. And, you know, we're looking at hundreds of patients in, in this particular trial. It wasn't even, it was, it was, it was under a hundred in terms of the sample size. We, 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 we went, I think it was 50, wasn't it, Rena? 50 something um, in, in the entire study. So we're relatively small sample size. So we acknowledge that. But um, to be able to demonstrate it in that type of sample, yes, the next phase is to scale this. But we also are looking forward to our conversations with healthcare, with government. And I think, you know, Karen made reference rightly at the beginning to, you know, the certification and uh, Remind as a company really, really not only have they been able to kind of license and commercialize the, the intellectual property from the works and, and best of luck to them. Um, they're, they're, they're committed to the quality piece. And what I mean by that is like ongoing validity around the, the label claim, the, the stability and the value. So bottom line is if my mom, and she does take the product, by the way, if she's taking the product and if she's paying her money to get it, I want her to get what she's paying for. Yes. And this is where, you know, when the doctors are brave enough to look at this science and to make the recommendation, Foundation. At the very least, those doctors should be comfortable and confident that the recommendation they're making is at least delivering what the trial did for the patient. So that's where the quality in this supplement certified, this stamp of approval that, that comes in. I think that's something for your listeners, because what we see from time to time is, you know, people, people will try and, you know, source all sorts of different types of micronutrients from healthcare stores and so on. Um, and some of that might be perfectly good, but the data that we've looked at is that actually a lot of, and this is where the whole, I think, negative association with food supplements comes into play is the wild west of what's going on, you know? So but the point I'm trying to make here is that not only is there now an evidence base, which has been built upon a, a biologically plausible rationale to do this, there's now this whole movement towards quality. So I'm very happy to see that happen. We've more work to do, as I said, but I think we're really in a good place now. Well, I think it's a fantastic I perhaps come in there as well. Sorry, Maria. I was just going to say, of yes. course, you know, the whole thing on nutrition and Alzheimer's, um, if you look at longitudinal worldwide studies, you know, in places yes. like, the, you know, where they have the Mediterranean diet and the blue zone diet, they have less prevalence or less numbers of, of dementia than in Western diets, for example. And then if you look at, this is all building on the evidence, if you look at um, Professor Roseanne Kenny's extraordinary longitudinal study in aging in Ireland, she also found that lower levels of these carotenoids 
were associated with poorer cognition or the corollary also true that higher levels were associated with better cognition. So there's huge international evidence all pointing towards the importance of these, these vital foodstuffs. It's just that we did, we took it a step further maybe and did what's called a double blind placebo controlled trial. So some people were on the active supplements and some people were not and neither the patient nor the researcher knew what supplement people were taking Mm -hmm. so that you had, you know, you had true information at the end of it. And that's why double blind is so important. But just to add Of course, we'd have liked more numbers. You know, of course, it would be great if different centers worldwide carried out this as well so that we can add to, you know, the very plausible and growing body of evidence that these nutrients are really important for brain health. Excellent. Well, I can't thank you enough for joining me today. This is really fascinating. And uh, Professor Mulcahy and Professor Nolan's last word to you, Karen, where can they get it? It's brand new to market, so we're working hard to get it into all the pharmacies nationwide. So it is listed with both pharmacy wholesalers. So if you go into any of your local pharmacies and if they don't have it on shelf, you can ask them to order it in and they'll have it in for you within the next day or two. It's also available um, to buy online directly from us at remind.eu. We're really excited to bring it to market. We're also excited to add it to our existing product range of Mackey Prime as well. So we have two products that are founded in, in scientific evidence from um from Professor Nolan and Professor Mulcahy's um amazing work in Waterford and it's great that we you know can bring it to market and make sure as many people as possible benefit from it. And Mairead, if I may come in there and for, for the avoidance of any doubt, neither Prof Mulcahy or I, you know, ha- are involved in that industry. We we're scientists yeah. and doctors respectfully. Yeah, and our university that we work with manages the intellectual property safely. So it's it's outside of our remit. But just for clarity, I think that's yeah. important. Thank you very much for today and I wish you the very best for the future. God Thank bless you. you. Again. Thanks, Thank you.